proponent of free speech. I don't care who says what. I believe that I, whether you're John Rocker or Michael Richards or even Donna, I have I have defended people's right to say whatever they wanted to say. I ain't gonna never forget what you said about this man and how you got where you are. Some people might, but I never will. I'll never forget how you denigrated his family. I'll never get, forget how you stoked fears. F you now and f forever. D. L. Hughley. So, on the TV, I saw George Lopez. So I come to find out that he kicked a heckler out of his show. Believe it or not, your boy Truth has done some comedy before. George Lopez kicked a black woman out of his show. Which, I would have a problem with it, until I started reading what happened. George Lopez made a joke. A lot of people laughed, and this woman didn't find it funny. Now, the interesting thing about this is, George Lopez, when you go to a George Lopez show, you know, a lot of his comedy is based on Mexican stereotypes. So, he's comedy does get a little racial. Every once in a while, he'll breeze his way over to other uh, racial stereotypes, and you know, it's all funny, and everybody laughs, and everybody thinks it's cool. Well, he said a joke that made this woman stand up and say something. And I tell you, the, the joke was, There's still two rules for the fucking Latino's family. Don't marry somebody black, and don't park in front of our house. That was his joke. And the crowd, oh gosh, oh, it's so funny. Oh, so funny, oh, so funny. Well, I don't know, this woman stands up and he sees her. And and really, before he hears what she says, he starts laying into her. Sit your f***ing ass down. I'm talking, sit your f***ing ass down. I was with him on everything until I heard what the joke was. So, come to find out, the reason why the woman stood up was not even to heckle George, really, but because she is half Mexican and half black. And she was trying to get his attention, like, listen, that stereotype ain't one on you. But he got offended and he kicked her out. Now, I don't care about all that. What I care about is his joke. I don't see how it was funny. I don't see the humor in it. I mean, yeah, if you can't take a joke, then, you know, get out. I understand all that. And, and here's the problem. That hurt me as a black person. I'm very sensitive to racial things, I admit. I don't take racial hate. Even racist, there's some funny racist jokes that I can take. But then there's some that are like, Okay, that's not really funny. That's a little offensive. And what George Lopez said to me was really offensive. Because he didn't say, oh, that's just how my grandmother was because my grandmother was racist. Two things that Latin people. So he was basically speaking for all of them. And it's a stereotype. But it just goes to show me how a lot of people feel. But now it's like, I don't care what you do in life, George Lopez. I can't stand you. I don't need to uh, hear your stuff. And there were some, very few, who came in defense of George Lopez. What really bothered me was one person in particular came to the defense. And that was one comedian, D.L. Hughley. He had the nerve to say, of free speech. I don't care who says what. I believe that I, whether you're John Rocker or Michael Richards or even Donna, I have I have defended people's right to say whatever they wanted to say. Uh, and particularly under the auspice of Kennedy, if somebody's telling a joke and you're offended by it, you don't have to listen. There's two real issues I have with that. Number one, the first real issue I have with that DL is you always on some social justice stuff. You always on some, oh, well, he's black and, and uh, Obama's black, that's why they're racist against Obama and uh, Black Lives Matter. And you always on this racial stuff, but then George Lopez basically says uh, Latin people, Mexican people, hate black people and you are like oh well, he's a comedian it's okay and then you even took it a step further my dude you took it a step further my g you even said kramer who was extremely racist i mean extremely racist on a comedy show he did shut up 50 years ago they had your own tied down with a fucking fork up your ass <laughs> rolls ass out he's a nigger he's a nigger he's a nigger Oh my god. A nigger, look, there's a nigger! Ooh! Ooh! You're gonna arrest me for calling a black man a nigger. Well, you interrupted me, pal! That's what happens when you interrupt a white man! He's gonna jump it out! Go for it! You said he's a comedian, it's okay! I mean, Kramer was on stage calling people straight out N words! N word, N word! N-word, N-word, N-word. My people used to hang your people. If this was 50 years ago, I'd hang you upside down and stab you in the butt. This is what Kramer said at a comedy show. And you're like, oh, it's okay if he says all that stuff to a black man because it's a comedy show? Like, really, my G? Like, like that? Like, you should get slapped in your face or something like that. There's no way a comedian, I don't care how raunchy or, or 
how weird they are. A person, there's certain things even comedians should keep out their mouth. And you defended it. Same person that would have cried anytime someone says something about a black person. The same hypocrite that cried because Steve Harvey went to visit Donald Trump. The same one that went to see Donald Trump has the nerve to say, it's okay for Kramer to say that. Shut up! 50 years ago, you had your own tied down with a fucking fork up your ass! He would hang black people if it was 50 years ago. Oh, it's okay that his ancestors once uh, owned their ancestors. Because it's comedy, it's comedy! Hey, don't worry about it, it's comedy! And you know what hurts the most is I used to look, like when you used to say stuff, like- Donald uh, Trump, what's it say? I think he's a racist. Yeah. And, I, and I think this it's not, uh, you can't equivocate. If I'm in a car, and uh, somebody I'm with commits a crime. The police pull me over. They don't go, oh, I can't make a reasonable argument that I didn't know. And I think you can't be a little pregnant and you can't be a little racist. America's so hungry for change that the two people leading it are two old white guys surrounded by people who think it's okay to be comfortable at rallies and say the things they say. This man know what he's talking about. I don't think that so much anymore, man. Because according to you, a person can be as bigoted, as racist, as evil, as disrespectful as they want. This fuck is just comedy. It's comedy. Oh, I mean, no, don't get offended. If someone makes a joke about, about rape, just don't go see the comedian. That's your logic. Unbelievable. Latin people, they have one rule. Don't marry black people. They ain't good enough. <laughs> black people ain't good enough for Latin people. <laughs> black people ain't good enough for Mexicans. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Like, what are we talking about? For shame, DL. I really hope you would see this one day. I really do. Because I need it to be explained to me. I need it to make sense to me. I need to understand where is the comedy in saying you can hang another person upside down or that their, their people once owned your people. Where in comedy is that okay? And there are lines in comedy where, where you really push the envelope. But yes, there are some things that are taboo for even comedians, and you know better than that, especially a person who is supposed to be about social justice. Unless I hear an apology, I don't, like, I, okay, I can't rock with you no more. But whatever, if we're making jokes, we're making jokes. What really was disappointing was when you were like, oh yeah, even Kramer, when he was talking that way to black people, it's people that are trying to ruin the comedy show. I don't understand why the hell you think just because you are doing comedy that you have some kind of magical force field or some sort of uh, some sort of invulnerability to any kind of criticism. Oh, well, you paid to see, if you paid to see Chow, you should, you know, you should have paid to see Chow. You paid to see Chow, you know what you expect. No, I did not expect. I've never heard George Lopez ever say anything like, Oh yeah, you know, keep black people away from my kids. Don't bring a don't bring a black person home. Don't make, don't let a black person marry my my daughter. So no, not just because you paid for a ticket does not mean that that's what you should have expected, sir. And then you know what the the worst part about this? Your defense. You said, oh, George Lopez can't be racist. You said there was a cat who had clearly just got out of prison. Tattoos everywhere. A Latin cat. He would not shake our hand because he had he had just came out of the joint and he had never been in, in, in proximity of a black dude. They wouldn't fight. That's just the truth. George said, "If you don't shake my brother, Sam, you're not. We're not I'm not gonna shake you." That's the equivalent to a racist white person saying, "Hey, you know, I, I have black friends." Like, what what are we talking about? Look at Donald Sterling. He owned an NBA team. He said his wife could sleep with him if he, she wanted to. Just don't bring him to the game. I don't want you to be seen in public with black people. I guess he's not racist either. Using your logic, what are we talking about?